Not at all. A lot of times it's just <clears throat> life has challenges yeah. to us. A lot of times the enemy of our soul is pushing against us because he knows we're trying to advance and so who's going to push back? That's right. So he brings discouragement, he brings fear, he brings yes. confusion. Mm -hmm. But I want to tell you, the Bible says we are more than a conqueror through him who loved us. So uh, we win. I've read the, the back of the book. <laughs> and you know what? We all win. Amen. We all win in Jesus Christ. And so, praise the Lord. So I, I really hope that you've made your plans for Thanksgiving Day with whatever you're going to do. And uh, remember that it's a day of giving thanks to God. And whether you're with uh, two families of your families or with none of your families or whatever, use that day to count your blessings. And be thankful for what God has done in your Amen. life. Amen. I think these things are temporary. I believe that we will be back with a semblance of normal. Uh, and uh, so, you know, I won't spend a lot of time talking about those things. But I want to share this with you before I get into the Word of God uh, this morning. Last Sunday, uh, there was over at Lamb's Fellowship in their amphitheater. And it could probably seat 1,500 to 2,000 outside. Tremendous time. 500 people showed up with masks and chairs and uh, 500 people and there were eight churches represented and wasn't it powerful Diana? Oh, My goodness Woo! it was absolutely wonderful. No brand, there was no church that was uh, you know we were putting this on it was like eight churches that came together pastors that are praying and so we're going to be doing this again. It was powerful. There was just something special about the unity, about the presence of God that was there. The worship was powerful. The short sermonettes that were given by a couple of the pastors in our city. Powerful, powerful things. And so, uh, and there were people who raised their hand to ask Jesus Christ to come into their life. Yeah. And it was just, it was absolutely powerful. People, uh, I'll tell you, people are more open to hearing about the gospel right now than maybe they normally would. Because all these things that are going on with this pandemic and the things that are happening in our nation are really causing people to think about their own soul. Yep. About really what is important. Yes. What is really important. Yes. And Bruce, you, you said it right this morning. Yes. This is really what's important, that we know Christ Jesus is our Lord and yes. Savior. And we're with our family this morning in the Lord. And so that's the most important thing. So hopefully in 2021 we'll be having more gatherings. Um, one thing is we will not be having prayer this Wednesday because of Thanksgiving. People are gone, busy, going places. Enjoy your Thanksgiving time. The challenges this year was, seems like every holiday that we've had, starting with Easter, all the way now, looking close to Christmas, everything has been shut in. It's been, you know, just a lot of the stuff that's going on. Because we've been, uh, we've been fighting an invisible disease. But we've also been fighting another thing invisible, and it's called warfare. Warfare. And I just want to encourage you that as much as the church services, um, you, that we're being diminished... I mean, you know what I'm when I say things are being diminished um, or meant to confine us God wins in the end That's right. Right. he's going to receive the glory That's right. That's so right. don't become discouraged because you see things diminished God is working in people's hearts behind the scenes and we need to remember that I have to remember that I encourage you if you weren't here last week to get on uh, Facebook uh, or YouTube, and listen to uh, my message that I shared with the congregation. The week before that, Apostle Dave Cunningham shared a powerful word. And I encourage you, catch up. Catch up and listen to these messages because they are the word of God for the hour in which we live. I want to say that. There is the, it is the word of God for the hour in which we're living. So, we understand also uh, this thing about warfare, that we are fighting an anti-Christ spirit. An anti-Christ spirit. That's why there's so much resistance. 
going on. There's a spirit of Antichrist, and the Antichrist spirit is against Christ and against the kingdom, and it's always and it's meant to diminish you and to confine you and restrain you. And we have to fight that with everything we can, but not with weapons of the flesh, but with Holy Spirit weapons of praise and worship and reading our Bible and making our confession. Amen. You know, the devil the devil that's not bothered about what you believe. Really, the enemy is not bothered at all, the enemy of your soul, about what you believe. But when he starts acting on it, then he feels threatened. That's right. When we put our faith that we have, and we begin to have uh, works to our faith. It's not, it's not enough just to believe something, but what about the works that go along with our faith? And he wants to restrain that and come against you in that. This message today, giving thanks in captivity, if you turn in your Bibles to uh, Acts, the 16th chapter, and we're going to look at verses 16 to 34. It's a story, a real story, that happened. The Apostle Paul and Silas, about them being thrown in prison. I'm going to go ahead and read this. Now it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with the spirit of divination met us, who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and us and cried out saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. And she did this for many days. But Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. But when her master saw that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas, dragged them into the marketplace to the authority. And they brought them to the magistrate and said, These men, being Jews, exceedingly trouble our city. And they teach customs which are not lawful for us, being Romans, to receive or to observe. Then the multitude rose up together against them. And the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Having received such a waiting here for the chain charge, he put them in the inner prison and fashioned their feet in the stocks. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners, look at that, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awakening from sleep and seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisoners had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. But Paul called out with a loud voice saying, <clears throat> excuse me, Do yourself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light, ran in, and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas, and he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? So they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him, and to all who were in his house, and he took them the same hour of the night, and washed their stripes, and immediately he and his family were baptized. And when he had brought them to his house, he set food before them, and he rejoiced, having believed in God with all his household. Can you say amen? Amen. What a fantastic miracle God did. Fantastic miracle. So there they were, Paul and Silas, at this city called Philippi, preaching the good news, but there was opposition by the devil, and the opposition was a spirit of python, like the snake. Divination here is called python. Python, and we know what python does. Python basically wants to scare you, he wants to restrict you and squeeze the life out of you and eat you. That's what a python will do. 
And so, this girl, I want you to see this. The girl met them. There was a direct challenge by the devil through this slave girl. This was a slave girl. How she got this spirit of divination, we don't know. Maybe it was generational that her parents were involved, but it was definitely witchcraft. This was witchcraft in order. And this spirit of divination, the Bible says she had, to do fortune telling. Fortune telling is not a gift from God. The word of knowledge that God will reveal things to someone for a purpose is the gift of God. Fortune telling is from the, is from the obvious, opposite sphere of the devil of trying to entice people by telling them something about their future to grab them that they would, and it takes them away from God but into the spirit of fortune telling. I don't know if we still have one here in town, but we have fortune telling place here in town that's moved around several times that people will go to and have their palms read. Um, there, used, there used to be a, a building there. They used to have wild weenies, hot dogs. Remember wild weenies? And it went from there to a palm reading place. And then from there, I believe, didn't they tear it down? And now we have Jack in the Box. <laughs> so we went from wild weenies to Jack in the Box. It's the spirit, it's the demonic spirit, if not of God, it's witchcraft. And so this girl met them. And for days, she kept following them around. And you ever look what in your Bible about what she was saying? These men are pro proclaiming, let's look what she was saying. These men are the servants of the Most High God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. She did this for many days. You say, well, what's wrong with that? Listen, the devil was mocking them. Right. It was done in a mocking way. Everywhere Paul and Silas went in that city of Philippi, she followed them, mocking them, letting everybody know, look at these guys, but it was done in a mocking way. I don't know why Paul put up with it for many days, but he did. Maybe, and this is one thing to hear, as they were preaching the gospel in Philippi, she was hearing the gospel as much as the devil was mocking through her. Get what I'm saying? Yeah. She was hearing the message of salvation that Jesus Christ is the Savior. And by accepting Him, you will have eternal life. She heard this message as they were preaching while Paul and Silas were preaching. And something must have happened to her. Paul, it says, you read your Bible, turn to the Spirit and said, come out of her in the name of Jesus. And that Spirit came out that hour. They broke the power of the devil, the spirit of Python, the spirit of witchcraft, Amen. fortune telling. Are you tracking with me this yes. morning? Yes. And her owners, because she was a slave girl, Maybe they were in, um, maybe they had an agreement together that we would buy this girl because she would probably go a lot. When they sold her on the slave market, she probably went for a lot of money. Because they could sell her as one who could tell the future. So they bought her, both of them. It says her masters. And when they saw, they didn't care about the spirit that was in operation, that she had demons, they didn't care about that. All they wanted was money. And when they saw, and they must have tested her, saw something different in her, of why she couldn't, <coughs> excuse me, she couldn't do that anymore. She couldn't tell the future. She couldn't use that gift of witchcraft because it was gone. The demon was gone. Hallelujah. I want to believe that that girl, when she had that confrontation with the power of God, she realized that not only am I free from that spirit of Python, but it's done in the name of Jesus who these guys were preaching all over Philippi. So what happened? They went and they basically lied about Paul and Silas and said, these men are teaching customs 
where Romans, you know, just got everybody all stirred up. We say that a lot, don't we, anymore, with riots and think people getting stirred up over stupid stuff, believing lies. It's scary. So they drug them into the marketplace, tore their clothes off of them, and beat them. Now this, this wasn't 39 stripes like the Jews did. Paul knows all about that. It said many stripes. Paul and Silas were beaten with rods. And I can imagine trying to protect yourself and being beaten and beaten and beaten because of the name of Jesus Christ. They were beaten. They were bleeding. They were taken to the jailer, it says, into the inner room. Make sure they were nice and secure, and they put their feet in stocks. Can you imagine being beat up, you're bleeding, your, your clothes have been ripped off of you, you're inside of this dungeon, they put your feet in stocks, and you're having to try to keep, they didn't have a nice cushiony pillow behind them. They're probably hunched over and so uncomfortable with their feet in the stocks. And that night at midnight, two things could have happened. They could have got depressed. They could have got mad at God. God, we're preaching the gospel. We cast out the demon and look what happened to us. We get beat up. And we, we, we want to quit. We didn't sign up for this. You know, when you sign up to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, there are things that are going to happen because of that name that you represent. That's right. Because you're following Christ. They could have been depressed. They could have been angry. They could have been pouting. I quit. I didn't sign up for this. But they didn't. <coughs> Excuse me. We read what they were doing. They were singing psalms and they were praying. Yeah. Midnight. <laughs> and the prisoners, the Bible says, you read it, were listening to them. Listening to them praying. I wonder what they were praying. Lord, we bless all those ones that beat us up because we know they beat us up because of your, your name. Lord, we bless these men. We bless their families. We pray you'd open up their eyes to see Jesus. Lord, they're praying. They weren't praying, God, get us out of here. I want to go home. I'm tired. Had enough? Ever want to pray that? <laughs> they're praying and worshiping and giving glory to God at midnight. And the prisoners were listening to them. The jailer is asleep. Remember, they're in the stocks. They're in the inner prison. He can go to sleep, but they're making all of this echoey noise throughout. You know, it would be pretty echoey down there. And all of a sudden, there's an earthquake. Let me say this to you about the power of worship and prayer. It creates an earthquake Maybe it does, the ground's not shaking, but it causes another kind of an earthquake. Yes, amen. There's an earthquake in the spiritual realm, and people and demons get nervous, and there are people right, that are going to be opening it to hearing the gospel. The prisoners were listening to them. God sent an earthquake, opened the doors, miracle. All their chains fell off, miracle. It's dark. It's pitch black. The jailer wakes up because of the earthquake and he goes running in and, and figuring the doors are open. He might as well <laughs> kill himself because he was responsible. Might as well kill myself because I don't have a job. I probably don't have a life because they're going to blame me for letting these guys go and all these other prisoners. Dire situation. That's all he knew. That job, my responsibility, and they're gone, and the earthquake, and all the doors are open. All the chains are off of these people. A miracle. God did a miracle. Amen. Listen, cool. when Jesus Christ does his miracle, he wants everybody's chains to fall off. Hallelujah. 
He wants everybody yes. changed to be free. He wants people That's free. Right. Yes. Free from sin and what sin has yes. done to people. Oh, yes. The older I get, and I hope it's with you too as you're following Christ, we hate to see what sin is doing to people. That's right. It makes them ugly. It binds them up. It destroys their life. That's right. Paul said, Do yourself no harm. Bring us a light. They didn't have a flashlight, they had a torch. <laughs> so they had that torch. Maybe there were several torches. And the man, who probably was, who knew who they were and why they were in there, the jailer, and it says that he fell down at their feet, we read it, trembling. There's no harm, we're all here, call for a light. The light came, and the jailer is shaking, and he asked this question. What must I do to be saved? Because he realized not only were these guys in there because of a miracle, but God had done a miracle right there in that prison to get his attention. It doesn't say anything about all the rest of the prisoners, but I'm going to tell you, I bet you they were on their knees too. What must I do to be saved? And they preached. And the forever that scripture that you need to claim for you and your family, for you and your family, when he asked that question, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. Here it is. You and your household. I claim that for my family. Yes, that's right. Claim that for your family. You got children? You got grandchildren, great grandchildren? You have Relatives, family, God, I'm standing on this as I'm praying and lifting their names. Every day, Carol and I lift our names up of our grandchildren. Our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren. Right. And even extension members of our family. We, we lift their names up Amen. and we claim this scripture that not only are we saved, but our household will be saved. Yes. Well, is it automatic? No. A person can be saved. But what if they resist the gospel? What if they say, I don't want Jesus Christ. I don't want to accept Him as my Lord and Savior. I don't want to, to follow Him and trust Him. You can do that. God has given every one of us free chance, free choice. We have free choice to choose. Nobody is born a Christian. You choose Jesus Christ. How many of us know that today? They spoke the word of the Lord to him, verse 32, and to all who were in his house. Can you imagine? It's, it's 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. Everybody's heart is beating a thousand beat the second because there's been an earthquake. How many of you sh are getting shook up when there's an earthquake? Oh, yeah. This was a big earthquake. It opened doors and let chains out, and it says the foundation of the whole jail was moved. So, they didn't waste the time. When there's a crisis, my brothers and sisters, don't waste the time worrying about you and your stuff. Ask God, is this an opportunity for me to open my mouth? Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God will give you opportunities in the midst of crisis so you can open your mouth. And what did they do? They preached Christ to him and his whole household. His wife... The children, they got woke up too. It's 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. They preached the word of God to them and they received the message. Look what it says in verse 33. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes. They must have been a mess. They, were got, they got beat up by angry people. They're bloody. No clothes on them. And it says, he took them to his own home and washed their stripes and set food in front of them. Does that indicate a changed heart? You know, one of the things that happens when we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior is we become hospitable. Or we should become hospitable. We should, the word 
And the word tells us that we are to be hospitable. But the word hospitable means a lover of strangers. That's what that word means. He took them home. Showed hospitality. And I'm sure he didn't slap down a peanut butter and jelly sandwich in front of him. Mama, it's one in the morning. Make some food and feed these men. Wash their stripes. Probably put some clothes on them. And it says, verse 34, and immediately he and all his family were baptized. It's one, two o'clock in the morning. It's dark. I'm sure the water is cold. You see this? They were baptized as a family. They found some water. I don't know if they had a bathtub or, or something, but they were baptized. I think we wait too long when people get saved. That's why I'm going to buy that if I can find a, a site that I want, an aluminum trough, that when people find Christ, we take them right out there and we baptize them. Right there on the grass. Woo, amen. I need a big <laughs> trough to do it. Big enough to do me. <laughs> we're baptized two, maybe this was 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning baptizing people why? because something happened in their heart Amen. when God does something in your heart do not delay to obey do it now yes. are you hearing what I'm saying? how did they know to be baptized? because they preached that they should believe in the Lord Jesus Christ with all their heart and be baptized in water. And they said, how about now? You know why they need to do it now? Because Paul and Silas were going to get out of town. Because when those guys found out that at the earthquake that they all escaped, they left town and went to the next place. When God is moving, don't say I'll put it off six months or a year or whatever. Obey now. Obey now. There's a message for that to all of you today. Obey now. God wants to do a mighty work in us. It says in verse 34, And when he had brought them to his home and set food before them, listen to this, the jailer rejoiced, having believed in God with all his household. Wow. Isn't that powerful? Yes. What does this have to do with you this time, Thanksgiving that's coming, this season that we're in? No matter what situation we're in, whether it be in jail, or just what we've been experiencing since March in our nation, I don't have to have everything working good for me to be able to be rejoicing and praising right. God. Amen. We need to praise God in our captivity. Amen. We need to praise God with the way things are now. That's right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Because our tendency is to complain about everything. And I, I'll point fingers to me because I complain. I don't like it. I don't like being restricted. That's I don't right. like being told where I can go, where I can't go. I don't like being told who I can have in my house, who can serve turkey. I don't like all the things that we've been told we're going to have to do. I don't like it. And I don't like it from people who don't do it themselves, like our governor. You all know that. I don't like it. I don't like what this has done to the church. I don't like what it does to people. And I'm saying I take it seriously that there is a disease. Yes. But I tell you what, I'm not going to be held captive in my heart. I'm going to worship and praise God and I'm going to do my works of faith. Amen. That's right. Are you hearing me today? Yes. I hear you. It's a choice. That whole family got saved. How many in the jail, we don't know. We'll find out someday. Having believed in God with all his household. Amen. 
People are bitter in this season. I see it. People are bitter and angry. I want to read something to you that I read this week from a Reverend Victor M. Jackson. Victor, Reverend Victor M. Jackson. I want to read this to you. It spoke to me. The offended life is a bitter one. The offended life is a lonely one. The offended life is a cynical one. As much as lies within you in 2020, do not cave into bitterness. Fight it with every ounce of strength within you. Choose faith. Choose hope. Choose love. Choose Jesus. And that is by Reverend Victor M. Jackson. That really speaks to me. How many like for me to read it again? Okay. The offended life is a bitter one. The offended life is a lonely one. The offended life is a cynical one. As much as lies within you in 2020, do not cave into bitterness. Fight it with every ounce of strength within you. Choose faith. Choose hope. Choose love. Choose Jesus. This season, as we are preparing for Thanksgiving, I know we're making some real radical changes for ours. Our home has been for 40 years, at least, a turkey on the Weber, family all around, food everywhere, kids, happiness and joy, and all the trimmings, much like yours. But we're not going to have it at our house this year because of the changes, the dynamic of family being in different places. We are going to travel. We are going to go to Thanksgiving. This is Thanksgiving, choose freedom. We've been told no singing or chanting. Wear your mask. I'm sorry. I'm going to shout. Yeah. I'm going to sing. That's right. And I'm going to rejoice. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. We might be fearful today. Well, what about who's going to give me COVID? I've got to be safe. I want to tell you folks, this is not about being safe, but somebody thinks this is about tyranny. Do you understand the difference? Mm -hmm. This is not about being safe, this is about tyranny. I'll leave it with that. Because it divides us and isolates us and it makes us suspicious of who I might get a disease from. I'm sorry, I'm going to live by faith and not fear. I will live wise, I will live smart, but I am not going to let fear run my life, and neither right, should you. Amen. So this is my choice, and if you could put that scripture up, Andy, Psalm 107. We're going to close in just a moment. Psalm 107, verses 21 and 22. I love this. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for His goodness. <laughs> Amen. And for His wonderful work to the children of men. Let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare His works with rejoicing. Amen. I'm choosing this. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to read it again. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful work to the children of men. Let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare His works with rejoicing. Yes. That's what I'm choosing to do. You need to choose this today. Word the scripture is uh, Psalm 107, verses 21 and 22. Amen? Yes. Another thing that I'm choosing is in Colossians 15 and 16. Colossians 3, verses 15 and 16. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Amen? And to which also you were called to one body and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly with all wisdom, 
teaching and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Didn't we just read what Paul and Silas were doing? Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing, look at it, with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Does that sound like worship? Amen. Does it sound like putting the Christ's word into your heart? Yes. Does it talk about letting his peace rule? See the word peace there, rule? See the word rule? How many like baseball? <laughs> Who's the guy that has the blue uniform with the hat, with the... The umpire. See the word rule? <laughs> Let the peace of God rule. The word rule means be the umpire. The peace of God be the umpire yes. in your heart and mind. And let us give ourselves to be thankful. Let us give ourselves. And you know what? Our children and our young people need to see the adults and the grandpas pray and offer thanks. Because a lot of our young people think about, what are you going to give me? That life is about what you can do for me. And what is it about us and Jesus Christ and being thankful? I read that scripture to you out of the New Living Translation. Again, I'll read it. Luke 12, verses 15. Then he said, Jesus said, Be Beware, guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. So whatever you're doing for this Thanksgiving, let it be with peace. Let it be with thanksgiving. Let it be that we're not going to be held captive in our hearts for our worship and our thanksgiving. Amen? Amen. Amen. You can change the atmosphere in your home, even though it's going to be a different type of year. You can set the mood by prayer. You can put on the praise music. You can talk, and I'm talking to older people here, a few young ones that are here this morning, we can talk about the goodness of God. All my life I have been faithful. You have been faithful. And I, Lord, am going to be faithful. Because you've been faithful to me first. Amen? Amen. Let's stand together. We've got so much to be thankful. Matt, would you come? I just want to take a minute for us just to meditate, muse, reflect, ponder about the goodness of God, about His mercy. The question I have for you today, what are you thankful for? What are you thankful for? I'm thankful for my Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm thankful for Carol. I'm thankful for my children, my grandchildren. I'm thankful that I have a roof over my head and food on my table. I'm thankful for clothes on my back. I'm thankful for the warmth of my home. I'm thankful for so many things that God has continued to be faithful. What are you thankful for today? Probably a lot of the things that I mentioned. Lord, we just come right now grateful. We've heard the word of God today. We've heard the word of God today. And so, Lord, we choose. And if we have been angry and we have been upset and if we have been ungrateful, forgive us. Forgive us. Forgive us, God, of selfishness and thinking that everything's about me. And, Lord, it's not. But it starts with you, Jesus. If anyone here today is here, and he has not said yes to Jesus Christ, God is calling your name today. God is calling you to follow him. And if you will, that lady we talked about got spirit, <clears throat> got delivered from demonic forces. God will set us free from every thing from the past. Every addiction, every anger, every rejection, every fear. Jesus, 
set us free, but He wants the relationship with us. Do you want a relationship with Him? He says, come. Come and be like that jailer that said, what must I do to be saved? And the same message is to you. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ with all of your heart. You will be saved as well as your household. I will say this. You can't fix you. Only God can fix you. But He wants that relationship with you. If that's you, come see me. We will pray together. But for the rest of us today, change the atmosphere by changing the attitude of our heart that we're grateful and that God has given us freedom in Jesus' name and that we will let the peace of God be the umpire of our hearts, our minds, and our homes. We thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's thank him. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We thank you, God, for your freedom, your love, your mercy. God, thank you for your blessings. Oh, God, we are not worthy. But in Christ Jesus, you have made us worthy. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you thanks. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Our God is good. God is good. And all the time. Amen. So remember this word today. We're free. We're not in captivity. Praise Him. Worship Him. Enjoy your Thanksgiving, your holiday time. We'll be here next Sunday. The Word of God is going to continue going out. The worship of God is going to continue to go out. Continue praying. Keep praying for our nation right now with everything that's going on. Christians really need to pray. Christians really need to pray for our nation. Enjoy your time with your family and wherever you're at, whatever you're doing. Amen. 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 Turn around and say, go with Jesus. Come on. Go with Jesus. Go with Jesus, go with Jesus today. Go with Jesus. Go with Jesus. Go with Jesus.